Yo, 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 what's up? How y'all doing? Welcome to Risky Behavior. I am your host, Smelly, and this is Risky News. Risky Behavior. Now, I'm sure some of y'all clicked on the video to find out how you can make $900,000 in less than 24 hours. And I assure you, this is no clickbait. It's actually 17 hours to be exact. And that's what? $52,000 an hour? Well, I know some of y'all think that's impossible. No, it's not. A man by the name of Perez Jr. out of Fontana, California, he was able to do it. And it was so impressive that he actually made the news. And um, I want to do a special shout out to my boy, the Prince of Petty. I'm going to make sure I link his info in the description under the video. And um, yeah, let's let's just go ahead and um, get into this clip. Your dad. No, I did. Yes, not. you did. No. Yeah, yes. daddy's dead because of you. Hours of interrogation. Police lying to a suspect in the Inland Empire until he falsely confesses to murder. And now the city of Fontana is paying a massive settlement tonight after police questioned a man for 17 hours until he confessed to killing his father, who's still alive. KKL News reporter Tom Waite joins us now with what led up to this this false and really hard to watch confession. It, it was, Pat, and I watched many hours of this intense interrogation, mm. and it really, it, it's very eye-opening. And we'll mm. get to it in just a second here. But the video of the interrogation is fascinating and disturbing. An innocent man spends hours being grilled by police. When it's over, he's in the throes of a full mental breakdown. And under pressure, he lies to detectives about killing his own father. We don't think you're a monster, Thomas. Fontana police detectives grilling Thomas Perez Jr. after Perez Jr. reported his father missing. This interrogation descends into what's being described as psychological torture after the detectives extract a false murder confession from Perez. We just told you we found your dead dad and you don't give a that detective is lying. Perez Sr. was not dead. But in this moment, Fontana detectives don't know where he is. Perez Jr. reported him missing after they had an argument. A search warrant was served at the family home. Perez Sr.'s wallet, cell phone, and even some blood stains were discovered. A canine also alerted to the odor of possible human remains. Detectives unleash an unrelenting interrogation of Perez Jr. You murdered your dad. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. No. Yeah, yes. daddy's dead because of you. No. Yes, not only that, but poor Morgan here. Margo. Margo. Mar <laughs> Sorry. Margo had a witness it. Yep. I walked through the blood. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yes. No. Yeah, it is. The psychological effects of hours of grilling take their toll. Detectives keep pushing. Perez spirals further. Eventually, Perez Jr. makes a false confession to killing his father. All this and 71-year-old Perez Sr. was alive. He went to his girlfriend's home but didn't have his cell phone. Perez Jr.'s attorney. The worst act of deliberate cruelty that I've seen suing the police for 40 years. I've, I've been suing the police for 40 years, and I've never seen the cops be that cruel to some. Steering on behalf of Perez Jr. sued Fontana and won a nearly $900,000 settlement. This all unfolded back in 2018, but the case was just finalized. I never thought that it was easy, maybe even possible, to get a completely innocent person confess to something like that. But after... I watched the video and watched the interrogation of Tom Perez. What I divined is, is that they could get you and I to confess to killing Abe Lincoln if they wanted to. It's unbelievable. And they, they're not amateurs, and they know what they're doing, and they know how to do it. Steering says even after detectives learned Perez Sr. was alive, they did not tell Perez Jr. Instead, they had him held for mental distress. Once they learned this, instead of telling him that because of what they did to him, they 5150 him. They place him on a civil protective custody hold, have him taken to the mental hospital, and then they tell the hospital 
that he's in custody and that he can't have anybody contacting him. We reached out to Fontana police and the city of Fontana before the end of business today for comment, but we did not hear back. So, Pat, you saw it there. Very intense stuff. Intense and very bizarre, actually, Tom. Yeah. And the big, big question, I'm sure everybody wants to know, why did the police do it? Yeah, and, you know, the fact that we reached out to them and they didn't respond, but the attorney, you know, t telling us that they, they didn't actually, he, he believes, didn't think that, he, didn't know if the guy was dead or not, if, if Thomas Sr. or Perez Sr. was dead. But what they, what they were trying to do is figure out what happened. Happened. And because of the evidence that was in those court documents, perhaps that's why they decided to go down that road because there was some blood evidence found or blood found. I don't know if there was evidence. It was blood that was found in the house mm -hmm. and then the dog that triggered on the odor of the possible human remains. So with all that together, the, the police officers or detectives then, you know, believe that this was a, the, the road they wanted to go down. But, you know, just to see him in such duress is very difficult to watch. It is. And the fact that um, they want a settlement. Absolutely. Mm, 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 mm. I don't know. You know what? I would like to think that I would not do something like that. You know, um, I've heard that, you know, I've heard and read about and, and watched documentaries on police interrogations and their tactics and the different things they do. But I would like to think that I got the mental capability to deny um killing somebody especially like you're trying to accuse me of killing my father or something i ain't gonna go for that i hope not i mean i don't know 17 hours mm, it don't seem that long but i guess it could be because i did hear that they do little things like play with the temperature inside the room right um they come in and they're real nice to you one moment and then they come in the room and they real mean to you. And they just keep playing this mental um, game with you. Um, looking back, though, like when it comes to this video, I don't know if he is maybe a little bit, um, he may be a little bit more slower than others. And I wonder if they take advantage of that. Somebody that they could tell is kind of um, naive-ish and stuff like that because i've heard of that where cops do take advantage of people that might not be as um you know quick as others and they kind of take advantage of it i wonder what that was because i don't know it's kind of crazy him in this room this part where he's sitting in the room and it's like what is he trying to pull out his own but, hair yeah. or something no yes no yeah the psychological effects of hours of grilling take their toll Detectives keep pushing. Perez spirals further. Eventually, Perez Jr. makes a false confession to killing his father. All this and 71-year-old Perez Sr. was alive. He went to his girlfriend's home but didn't have his cell phone. Perez Jr.'s attorney. The worst witness. I mean, Perez see. Jr. You murdered your dad. No, I did Yes, you did. No. Yeah, yes. daddy's dead because of you. No. Yes, not only that, but poor Morgan here. Margo. Margo. Mar Sorry. Margo had a witness it. Yep. I walked through the blood. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yes. No. Yeah. It is. The psychological effects of hours of grilling take their toll. <laughs> Detectives keep pushing. Perez spirals further. Eventually, Perez Jr. makes a false confession. You know, I can't believe they do that to somebody and then... Even when they find out that the father is alive, for them to continue, like, they just continue to cause damage. I think that um, they may have not had to pay um, such a, a high settlement if they would have just corrected their, you know, hey, look, we found blood. Because... It is reasonable to say that if you find blood and you have a, a cadaver dog that hits on a particular scent, um, you have somebody that have left their wallet, somebody that have left their cell phone at the house. People don't usually um, run away or leave without taking their wallet and their cell phone unless somebody forced them to leave. So I can understand them thinking that, hold on, y'all just had an argument. 
Um, and it and it's the whole, you know, people are most likely harmed by somebody that's close to them. So I can understand them thinking it was him. I can understand them lying to get a confession out of him. Like, hey, man, we done already caught you. We got you on video. Hey, man, we we got a witness that saw you um, hurt your father. I can, I can understand that. But once this man has a mental breakdown and you know his father is alive, why continue? Why continue? Because you had no reason to do that. You was trying to get a confession out of somebody that was what you you say you had blood evidence. You say you had a cadaver dog that hit on the scent. If you really had all these things, there was no reason to continue to lie. That's the part I don't get. There's no reason to continue to lie. Oh, the father is alive. Cool. Well, we're done here. Hey, your son, We you know, we was talking to him. We was asking him some tough questions about the blood we found in the house. The cadaver dog had a hit in the house. Your wallet and your cell phone was left in the house. It was really looking like somebody hurt you. He had a mental breakdown about it. You know, this is the hospital he's staying at. And then whatever. But they deny him, you know, his rights and stuff just for no reason. And the whole time the father is still alive. And then even after finding out that the father's alive, you just continue doing it. And what was the father doing? Like this whole time he was at his girlfriend's house. I tell you one thing, he ain't going to argue with his dad no more. I know his dad came back and was like, mm-hmm. Yeah. You won't argue with me no more. You know, this it's crazy. I, what does the prosecutor even think about this? Like, you know, your detectives brought you a confession to a murder that never happened. And then the father, what the father went down there looking for his son. And it's like, hold on. So you got a confession for a murder. And the man that was murdered is looking for his son. It's just, it's silly, man. Uh, I, I couldn't imagine, you know, you come home from your girlfriend's house and, and your neighbors are telling you that your son is down in prison and he's been charged with your murder. And you're like, how? I'm, I'm still alive. You know, it's just silly. It's just crazy. Anywho, man, y'all get in the comment section and um, talk to me, man. Let me know what y'all think. Um, do y'all think that y'all could... Um, Stay strong in a situation like that. If you were being held in a room for 17 hours, do you do you think to yourself, like, man, could I withstand that? Do you think that you could be forced into a false confession? I don't know. Y'all get in the comments. Let me know. Smash that like button. Subscribe. Share. Tell a friend to tell a friend. I appreciate you all. Risky out. Risky behavior.